Hello Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designer, this is Gavin here with SecretsOfLongevity.com. Something that almost everyone has at some point in their life, uh, whether they grew up with one or they have one when they're older because they didn't have one as a kid, or they don't have one when they're older because they had one as a kid and they found it to be too much work, is a pet. And the impact it has on a life is something that I've always found interesting and I've long since been a lover of animals. I've had a great interest in a whole manner of different types of animals at varying times in my life, especially growing up. And as I got into the world of health, I was curious as to the impact that having an animal can have on your health, whether positive or negative. And while I don't feel like I've reached a point of being able to say this too conclusively, uh, more and more I see indications of certain things around the health of our pets as well as the impact it has on our own health. So I'm kind of merging two ideas within this video and just putting it out there as sort of a ideology, because I'm not trying to set this in stone, that we approach the uh, acquisition of a pet with more conscientiousness uh, because of its impact on our health and also the impact it has on our pet's health. Now, as I'm making this video, I'll be referring to a few links which you can find in the drop-down menu below, and I'll just number them off as I mention them. Some are articles, some are scientific articles. Uh, this is just to give some reference to uh, the points I'm bringing up. So, number one, which actually got me thinking about this, is an article which is based on a new study that's come out, and I've seen many before on this topic around a variety of animals, is that the spaying or neutering of specifically golden retrievers, can impact the lifespan in terms of shortening it. It increases a risk of a number of things from cancers to bone diseases and the risk of this goes up if it was done too early, specifically after before one year time is up. That's to do with uh, the natural cycle that any animal goes through in its development. Obviously a dog, its teenagerhood, comes at a much earlier age than say in humans, and you've seen me do videos in the past on castration in humans, which I'll link to here actually, just so you can have the reference and know where I stand on that, which should be pretty clear. But essentially, um, there are some naysayers out there who try to imply that uh, affecting fertility, like cutting off the reproductive parts of any animal, including humans, can somehow increase its lifespan. The only exception I see that being realistic is in farm animals where you have animals in these unnatural contained environments, it helps to subdue them and that can increase their lifespan because they're not going to injure themselves. But at pets, uh, humans, we do not benefit from this. And the increase in diseases from the lack of good healthy hormones being introduced into the bloodstream is extremely detrimental. And so that's going to be link number one below, is just that article about that. And there's been other studies that have looked at other types of breeds of dogs, as the article kind of alludes to, and they find different amounts. But in all cases, it's finding an increase in uh, either diseases or lowering of lifespan. And the exact degree to which it occurs is a little bit beside the point. The fact is that's happening, period. And this, uh, when I was reading, this brought up something else in my mind. Um, relating to a charity I sometimes donate to, which is the uh, Big Cat Rescue, which they actually have a YouTube channel, that's how I first heard about them. You can always search that. And they uh, rescue large wildcats that have been taken to uh, on as pets or have been taken uh, into circuses. And they actually get taken away from those groups or those homes and taken in uh, to protect them. And essentially one thing that stood out was the story about um, one or more of their male lions whenever they take them on and because some of their funding comes from people coming to view the animals in their environments they obviously want the male lions to look healthy so instead of castrating them which they do uh, to all the animals castration or spaying they instead choose to do a vasectomy on the male lion so that their testicles can still produce enough testosterone which allows them to keep their mane Otherwise, the manes of lions fall out. Now, the reason they do anything at all with a castration or vasectomy is because they don't want these animals reproducing in their captivity because these are places for the animals to live out their lives in a comfortable setting and they don't want to deal with the cost of having extra animals. They want to keep that down because they're constantly taking in animals. Now, if we're talking about pets, in my opinion, we've come a long way from how animals were originally used by humans. 
into this sort of strange scenario, which I don't personally ethically and morally agree with, the keeping of pets. That is by no means my judgment on anyone who does have a pet. I have many friends who have pets. They're wonderful. I love cats. I love dogs. But it's more the fact that people do this, as opposed to any one individual doing this, the fact that it's a social thing, uh, rubs me the wrong way because in order for that to function harmoniously, uh, people are having to castrate their animals. So beyond just preventing the reproduction and excess population of pets, which totally makes sense and is very reasonable and needs to happen, uh, but then we could argue for vasectomies and tying the tubes of male and female cats and dogs. But in this case, castration and actually removing the ovaries is ideal to subdue the animals so that they can live in a domesticated environment without you know, marking their territory, scratching up furniture, and causing the problems that can happen when this isn't uh, put into place. And actually removing those hormone-producing endocrine glands. So if you really kind of think about this in an abstract way, the domestication of humans and the health problems that comes with that, we end up taking on these animals, which in the past we would have had for like hunting or herding, and these things that actually had practical applications, and over time it's turned into more of a comfort. I think people in an ideal scenario, if they were very much interested in health and perhaps one day our society as a whole will be more interested in this, should maybe just use pets for those reasons as opposed to this sort of comfort um, that, that is trying to make up for something that they might be missing. And this spurred me to look further and to actually look if there's any health benefits to pets. And yes, there's certainly health benefits and increase the quality of life is great, especially post surgery or in the elderly for comforting them and uh, giving them better health in certain ways, but there's no evidence that actually having a pet increases your lifespan. So actual longevity is not improved by having pets. So this kind of further validated my ideas on this in that where we've come to as humans is so far removed from nature that we're now dragging in nature with us and screwing it up and it, they're suffering as a result. The animals and pets, their lifespans are decreased Yes, it's increased by them being indoors, but that lowers the quality of life and you're damaging them and giving them suffering because uh, you want them to live in this uh, synthetic environment that you happen to live in. So you end up having to mutilate their body to make them functional in that environment uh, that you've kind of mutilated your own body to fit into, or at least your ancestors did over many generations. Now, I don't want to come off as a hypocrite. I have a pet of my own. I have a king snake. It's a wild animal. It hasn't been hybridized over several generations to fit a specific function. It's actually a very aggressive snake. I can barely pick it up because it is uh, so snappy and tries to bite me every time. But I enjoy its uh, place in my home. I've got a massive tank for it, much bigger than is needed for one its size. And I partly took it on because it was a snake that needed a home. Monsters this evening are looking pretty happy and active. I got it from someone who actually takes in uh, animals that don't have homes and he just has so many animals that he uh, was offering to give this one to me and I thought, why not? And there's very little a snake can have in terms of an impact on me negatively um, considering it's a reptile that's in an enclosed space. But with a cat and a dog, there's a lot more interaction physical interaction and a lot more exchange of things if you're getting right up in the face of the pet. There's actually a number of parasites, um, diseases, and exposure to things that you get from having an animal in that way. Uh, cats are somewhat worse than dogs in terms of the number of uh, things they bring into your home, especially if it's a cat that goes in and out of doors, but even if it's just an indoor cat, it's a breeding ground for things that humans don't normally get. It doesn't mean they're bad in that way, but we just take on these things that we wouldn't normally get exposed to, and that has been shown to cause health problems. It can cause arthritis in the elderly. We can get all sorts of parasites from dogs as well, especially when people are getting right in the face of the dog and let it lick their mouths and faces. You simply do not see traditional humans, our ancestors, having used animals in that way, in that sort of comfort type way, uh, when they would have actually had them for, you know, pulling a sledge or hunting or rounding up animals. 
it was a slightly more removed, uh, yet probably just as satisfying relationship. But in our, once again, synthetic world that we've created around us, we have this role that we have with pets that is very artificial and it has its detriments. So I'm just putting all this information out there just to maybe stimulate some ideas. I'm not saying get rid of your pet by any means. If you don't have a pet but have been considering it, you know, weigh your options. If you feel very drawn to having one, by all means do so. I'd of course always recommend going to a shelter or getting an animal that needs a home as opposed to going to pet stores to buy them new. The amount of bad treatment that happens to animals in the pet animal industry is horrendous. Of course there's always going to be great places that do good work, but there's also the bad. There's puppy mills, there's kitten mills, there's importation of exotic pets and them getting damaged and suffering in the transportation, them being pulled out of the environment if they're slightly endangered. The list goes on and on. We don't need to be supporting uh, those practices, so by all means, if you are going to go for something, please do look for the most ethical and uh, best way to take in an animal that is going to improve, on a small scale, the world uh, in a greater way. So, once again, I didn't actually mention the numbers as I was going through them, but a lot of my points are summed up in the articles in the links below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and like, favorite, and share this video if you feel so inclined. Take care and embrace life without limits.